it be? For me, you me, Louis T. Welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up and take command. I, of course, am Commander in Chief Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday, we talked about the deal Deron Payne got four years, $90 million, 60 of it guaranteed. I told you at the very tail end of that video, I expected Washington to be active, very active. I would be shocked if they weren't in the very first day of the tampering period. Free agency gets underway on Wednesday, along with the start of the new league year. And what do you know? Washington, very active in the wee hours of the tampering period. First thing up. Washington attacking the offensive line aggressively as I thought they would. Wasn't expecting any big signings. None of the big guys that are going to get a ton of money. Um, that's not where we're shopping. Um, I, t I thought we would be in that guard market per se. And that's exactly where they started their shopping. Uh, going after former New York Giant offensive lineman Nick Gates. He was a center. He was a guard. More, more prolifically a center for the Giants, but can also play guard and in a pinch can play tackle as well. That kind of versatility, as you know, is not lost on Ron Rivera. He loves his positional flex, but what he's probably being brought here to do more likely than not is to play the center position. Now, we'll see what happens with Chase Rouye, right? Don't want to count him out. And if Rouye is healthy, he's probably better than Nick Gates. So we'll see what happens there, right? But it gives you an insurance policy. He can also play guard. So in the event that Rouye is healthy and you want to go in a different direction at guard, you can now do that with Nick Gates. It gives you the depth. That's all we're looking for here. And I told you guys, I said, I really feel like they're going to go out here and replace Wes Schweitzer with a Wes Schweitzer type, a guy that you signed to a three-year deal. Remember, I talked about Wes's three-year, $13.5 million deal back in 2020. I said, I wouldn't mind us signing a guy uh, on a deal similar to that. Here is that deal. Here is that guy, Nick Gates, three years, $18 million. He's a guard center combo, which Wes Schweitzer was coming over from Atlanta uh, when we signed him. So it makes a ton of sense. It fits into the timeline. He's 27 years old. Now uh, that I've given you all of the background information, let's talk about Nick Gates and why this is, a bittersweet signing. Now, one, you're wrestling him away from a divisional foe, and he's beloved in New York. You, you listen to any of the Giants fans, and they'll tell you, Nick Gates is a dog. They love him, okay? They, they rooted like hell for him to get back on the field, and let's talk about that because that is a significant part of this transaction. One that gives me a bit of pause. I'm not going to lie to you. Nick Gates... Um, undrafted, and, and I'll, I'll just say this, I don't want to harp on this, Ron loves his undrafted guys, guys that are drafted late in, in the NFL draft, guys that go undrafted. He likes guys that get it out of the mud, okay? Likes guys that get it out of the mud. Charles Leno Jr., seventh round pick. Um, Cornelius Lucas, undrafted, all right? Andrew Norwell, undrafted, okay? Nick Gates, undrafted. All right, so this is his thing. He loves guys that are late rounders, who are undrafted, who get it out of the mud, all right, who play every single game like it's their last because they remember what it was like to not hear their name until the seventh round, until um, someone picked up the phone and called them after the draft because they didn't hear their name during the draft. But in any event, Nick Gates, uh, undrafted, okay, um, brought in here, Okay, to out of Nebraska, went to the Giants um, as an undrafted rookie, uh, ended up making that football team, got an opportunity in 2021, seized that opportunity, um, played really well. Actually, in 2019, got an opportunity, played well. In 2020, they made him, no, uh, 2020, he got the opportunity uh, to play played well 2021 they made him a team captain and in the second game of the season if you recall that was a Thursday night game a very fun one Thursday night game against Washington in uh, DC or in Maryland Landover Maryland against Washington at FedEx Field um, he snapped his leg in half did Nick Gates um, yikes it was nasty it was gruesome I remember people talking about hearing the snap on the field 
I remember when it happened watching the game, they went to a commercial break and they did not show the injury because it was so gruesome. Um, Nick Gates thought his career was over. He had tweeted out, I remember afterwards, that he, it wasn't looking good and that it might have been a career-ending injury. He snapped his tibia, uh, his fibia, uh, whatever else is down there. He pretty much snapped all of it in half. And um, he had seven surgeries to repair his leg, a la Alex Smith, okay? Um, it was a long road back. But he made it, and he actually played in 10 games last year and started eight of them, including the final seven of the season for the Giants, and he also started in the postseason for them as well, those two postseason games, the win against the Vikings and the loss at Philadelphia. So um, he has come all the way back. He's here, right? It's a great story. I think that this guy is phenomenal when he's healthy. But I'm nervous because part of the problem with what we've dealt with on the interior of the offensive line in particular, center in particular, is a rash of injuries consistently cropping up and biting us in the ass. Whether it was Chase Rouye or Tyler Larson, we've always had guys that have been banged up the last two years at center. And then it's bled over to the guard positions where, where Schweitzer was banged up and we dealt with injuries to Trey Turner and Andrew Norwell was dealing with injuries that were nagging him all year long. And this was a constant theme of the season. We struggled on the interior. And you're looking to fortify that group. You don't want to bring in a guy that just repaired his leg with seven surgeries, but he's back. And if anybody has a soft spot for a guy that has battled his way back from injuries, it's Ron Rivera. He coached. The only player in NFL history to come back from three ACL tears and still have a very healthy and hearty career in Thomas Davis. Thomas Davis played nine years in the league after he tore his ACL for the third time. All three of those ACL tears came with Ron Rivera in Carolina. Easily could have been given up on. Ron didn't give up on him, and it paid huge dividends. He watched Alex Smith bust his ass to get back on the field and ultimately help him go to the playoffs and win the division in 2020. So Ron is a guy that has a soft spot for players who find their way back from massive injuries. That said, he played well when he was on the field last year in those eight starts in the regular season and the two additional ones in the playoffs. And thus, they feel confident that he's all the way back from this injury. There's nothing really to be concerned about. And, and again, he'll get a physical, you know, upon signing, and they'll, they'll check everything out. But as of right now, um, they feel really good about not only adding a West White shirt tw uh, type to this team, which means he's not necessarily your starter, okay? He's your utility man. Whatever you need on the interior, center, guard, you know, whatever the case may be, he can do it. He ultimately may be the starter, okay? He ultimately may be a backup. Whatever the case may be, it's good to know that they are adding depth on that interior. Again, they may have in-house answers. We still don't know what they're ultimately going to do, whether they look at Chris Paul as an answer at guard, whether they look at, um, whether they look at Sam Cosme as an answer at guard. They just signed another uh, offensive lineman in Andrew Wiley. Is he a starting tackle or is he a starting guard? I don't know the answers to any of this. All I know is it's a bunch of depth. Throw more pieces into that offensive line pot and you allow those pieces to be able to help you. And so for me, I just like the fact that they continue to add depth, continue to throw more guys into the mix and I've said this before, I'll say it again. At the end of the day, find the best five guys that give you a chance and you roll with them, and that's what they're doing. And I do not think they are done, okay? Whether it's another guy in free agency or they go to the draft, they're going to add more depth along the offensive line before it's all said and done. But Nick Gates has been added to this football team. I'm excited about adding him. I'm also apprehensive because... Again, he did have seven surgeries just a, a season and a half ago, you know, in 2021. And now we're signing him to a three-year deal 
worth $18 million. Again, he this feels Wes Schweitzer-ish. I told you I felt like they were going to do that, and, and I don't think they're done. But if he's healthy, this is a great move, one that will benefit this football team, whether he's starting at center, whether he's starting at guard, or whether he's backing up those three interior offensive line positions. We got ourselves a good football player when healthy. So that's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on the command post. Stay locked in as we will have wall-to-wall coverage of anything the commanders do over the next 48 to 72 hours. It will be a madhouse the next three to four days, really. Uh, These first couple of days of free agency are a whirlwind. Things start to settle down, but it's not over, okay? That first wave of free agency doesn't end free agency, but uh, it's never crazier than the first two days or so of free agency. So uh, these tampering uh, days are huge. Again, nothing is etched in stone. You're agreeing in principle to these deals, but you have not signed on the dotted line. It cannot become official until Wednesday, but Nick Gates looks like he's going to be joining the Washington Commanders. We'll see what happens moving forward. That's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on the Command Post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I'll be back to talk about the signing of offensive lineman Andrew Wiley. We'll also talk about an additional couple of signings of guys coming back, including Kalik Hudson and cornerback Danny Johnson. So stay tuned for all of that. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Louis T. Network.